Hey, how's it going? Do it yourself first. Today I'm going to show you a couple methods you can use to find vacuum leaks on your car. Alright, so the first and safest way to find vacuum leaks is to get a spray bottle and fill it up with plain water. So next you want to start your engine and you want to make sure you do this on a cold engine because a lot of vacuum leaks will show on a cold engine at idle but they won't show when the engine is warm and up to the operating temperature. And next you want to start spraying on all components that could potentially have a vacuum leak and that includes this air hose that comes from your air filter box where it connects to your throttle body the throttle body gasket between your throttle body and your intake manifold and then especially all these little vacuum lines that come out of your intake manifold and throttle body because these are a main culprit of small vacuum leaks because over time they just get dried up they develop cracks and then air starts leaking into your engine also obviously the intake manifold gasket that goes between your intake manifold and your cylinder head here maybe on this spare Honda intake manifold I can show you better basically this is where your throttle body goes into your intake manifold the gasket here can leak all these little ports that go to your intake manifold and have a vacuum line going to them you need to spray around that vacuum line and check for leaks and then obviously all the gaskets for your uh, EGR valve, your PCV valve your intake manifold to cylinder head gasket and also around your fuel injectors because these seals can also leak and then air can sneak by these and get into your intake manifold and then your engine. Now this car doesn't have a vacuum leak as far as I know but I've gone ahead and pulled the vacuum leak on the side of the intake manifold right there so you guys can see how it acts up when we start spraying water around it. Alright so as you guys can probably tell our engine is revving way too high due to this vacuum leak. And that's one of the signs of hanging vacuum leak, a uh, high RPM at idle. Alright, I'm not sure how much of that you guys were able to hear, but the idea behind using water is when you spray it on a vacuum leak and as it gets sucked in into your engine, it's supposed to make a distinct noise of letting you know that you have a vacuum leak right where you just sprayed. Now although this method is pretty safe, but it only works on larger vacuum leaks. In other words, you can spray this over small or medium sized vacuum leaks, but since the vacuum leak is not large enough, it's not going to suck in enough water to make that distinct noise. And furthermore, since this is just plain water, it's not going to make a difference in your RPM letting you know you found your leak. Alright, next up, some good old propane. Now the danger in using propane is when you use too much propane. In other words, open this way up and have too much pressure coming out of this. And then if you have an arc coming from one of your spark plugs or your ignition coils, then that's going to catch on fire. Then you're going to have a big, huge ball of fire around your engine bay. But even at that, it's less dangerous than the next method, which is to use starting fluid, which could potentially catch your engine on fire. Then from there, it could get much worse. But again, make sure you do this on a cold engine, but also have one of these and a garden hose nearby. So again, first I'll demonstrate on this spare intake manifold. So you basically want to crack open your uh, regulator. Don't open it all the way, just halfway is fine. And also if there's uh, places that you can't really get to, you can always put a vacuum line at the end of this. And then again, go around all the suspecting uh, areas that you think you might have a vacuum leak, like around all the gaskets, the vacuum. Uh, small vacuum lines and your intake manifold gaskets, EGR gaskets and then with using this you will know a change or difference in your uh, RPM when you find your vacuum leak. And finally the last method which is to use starting fluid and again this is somewhat dangerous if you have arcing from any of your spark plugs or ignition coils but in my experience this is the most efficient way to find vacuum leak. And I say that because unlike propane, you don't exactly have to be over the, where the vacuum leak is to notice the difference in the RPM. You can kind of spray this all over the suspected area and it might leak and get into the vacuum leak and let you know you got your uh, vacuum leak right there by changing the RPM. Or in other words, this is just better for a beginner. But again, make sure you do this on a dead cold engine so you reduce the chance of anything catching on fire. And there you have it, those are three basic methods that a duty sulfur can use to find vacuum leaks. Now, there are a couple of components on your car that could have a vacuum leak where spraying, starting fluid or uh, getting propane around it is not going to let you know you have a leak there. And I cover those uh, with uh, more details on how to find vacuum leaks in general in a video 
on my other channel. I'll put a link to that video on this side of the screen if you want to check it out and learn more uh, about vacuum leaks and how to diagnose them. But also, again, make sure you don't have any problems with your uh, spark plug wires and your ignition coils. And I'll put a link to a couple of videos regarding those components, how to diagnose them, test them uh, on the screen for you as well. And uh, if you like this video, though, please give it a thumbs up. Subscribe if you want to see more like it. I'll see you next time. Thanks for watching.